Hey Gavox here. So Team of the Week Legends were revealed by EA Sports on Twitter. We're going to go through them. We're going to go through how we're making coins, you know, uh, investing, selling, that kind of stuff still. Uh, what, what the hype is doing with OBJ and uh, a few other things. But before we get into anything, let's take a look and, and uh, let's take, you know, a gander. Add a word from our sponsor. Rock Bottom Coins is the number one place to get your Perfect. Madden 21 coins. If you make coins for my videos, sell them to Rock Bottom. If you're buying, use my code GUTBOX for 15% off. Exactly framed as all things should be. Just like OJ. Anyways, Sean Alexander. Okay, I really love this name coming back, right? We, we talked about this morning when we kind of guessed it might be Sean Alexander when Kralos said, you know, we hadn't had him for a while. He's very excited. We thought it was like a Seahawk. Alexander, I don't know, it just made sense because he had a huge week four back in the day. So anyways, this Sean Alexander, solid stats, right? You expect it to be a little higher, but like 90 overall with only like one thing at 90 is, is you know, always the meme in the, in the community. But like, you know, to be fair, he ran behind like two of the most talented offensive linemen to ever grace our earth. So maybe they're well warranted. Um, obviously, Barry's going to be better, but like not bad for the Seahawks. And the uh, Washington theme team because he played uh, you know a little bit of a season there. So overall, I love it. Right, more exciting than the linemen that we got over the weekend. I know, I know, I know. We need linemen. We need linemen to get upgraded. But it's kind of like vegetables, right? It's just I know we need them, but I actually don't want them. So like, it's cool. Sean Alexander is a much better name, but of course, Mean Joe Green is a better player overall um, in the history of the game than Sean Alexander. But still cool, right? I still I don't know. I got I, I, it's tough. I wish we had more legends coming out each weekend to make it more exciting. The other name though, OCU and Yora, very cool, speedy plays right end. You can throw him at defensive tackle if you need to put a spy out there to hopefully chase down the Vicks or the Lamars, whoever they're using. A okay speed there, 83. Obviously nothing game breaking. Finesse move 90. Block shed a little lower than you think, but like I've been using TJ Watt at my defensive end with his low block shed and uh, just with his high finesse move too, and like. Even though block shed, yeah, you rely somewhat on block shed to stop the run. It's mostly like if you use it and shoot the gap and either click off or make the tackle yourself versus anything linemen are doing to shed block. So I don't know. I'm, I'm kind of like block shed obviously matters, but I'm a little bit off the like high block shed train that I used to be on. And because like linemen just get pushed no matter your stats. I've used thick boys. I've used thin boys. And it's all the same, dude. It doesn't matter. Like I've had guys with like. 10 overall above my opponent's offensive lineman, and they get still get pushed back. My weight, the same. Strength higher. Block shit higher. All that stuff. And I still get pushed back. So it's just frustrating to see that in game, that it doesn't actually really matter, uh, strength specifically or weight. Um, I don't know. That's my thoughts about it. But that's why I'm not as excited about linemen coming out anymore as I used to be, because I've just seen them fail me too many times. So anyways, cool names though. I really like it. Sean Alexander, 90 overalls. Now, let's talk about the OBJ, right? You know, they kind of teased a little bit of OBJ because of his uh, quality game um, that he had this past weekend, and they kind of teased it again on the Instagram account. Now, if you guys follow the old Fox on Twitter, shout out to you. Appreciate you. You are kings and maybe the queen that maybe one female that watches me, but... I talked about, you know, the market thinks Odell had a good game. And obviously it bared out because he went up in price from about 5K to about 28K. I don't remember if I rec I, I may have recommended him in my investing video because he is a big name um, and he's up to 28K. Now, you're like, wow, should I invest in this? You know, I I, I got a few of these maybe. Should I, I'm, I'm going to sell tomorrow when Team of the Week comes out because everyone's going to want Odell's power up, right? Well, the thing is like a lot of people think that same way, right? So like there's the hype. Because the hype is there... You generally want to sell on hype when people are excited about the card versus when it actually happens. Because that's when the flood wave of cards come in as people are cashing out their investments. So it's, it's best if you teased on something like OBJ to sell ahead of time, bank your profits. Maybe his card goes up, maybe the Odell goes up, but history tells us they do not. Shaq Barrett here. Now, if it was an all-star Finnegan, the power-ups come from here. But this one, the set doesn't have the uh, power come out of. But like... They're 90 overall. We expect it to stay 90 overall because these things are all 90 overall and these cards are 90 overall. So 90 overall Odell. Will a powered up 91 overall Odell break the game? It's not 16 anymore. No spec catching as easy now. Um, I don't think so, right? We'll be in demand. Big name. I don't know. I, I don't love the investment. I would cash out right now if you have any Odell power ups. If you're not going to do If you're going to give them yourself, go ahead and keep them. But that's my advice. So 
sell on hype is generally the best idea unless the card is like say if you have a power up if the card is super easy to get like from a solo then we generally see and if it's got good stats then we generally see it go up over time versus selling on hype or they're like something insane like that it's hard to get the power up and the card stats are crazy those are the only times where you really see pops go up after it's already in the game because people are going to keep pulling packs and he's going to keep coming out of packs and the demand will kind of die down as people already use odell and move on to new uh wide receiver so let's talk about other ways for making coins obviously my last week oh let me get rid of that my last week video on the gap pack method had a lot of feedback on that one. Some people say yay. Some people say, oh, it was okay for me, but I prefer other methods, and that's totally fine. Um, basically, you get a player pack. You exchange it in the Superstars 3 for 1, and then you use that 76 to 78 to exchange it into a Mutt 50 card. I think it's a really good idea. This is great to do during the week if you have time between games or you just feel like pulling packs and like maybe watching Netflix or, or Twitch if you, you to your boys. Twitch channel, it's awesome. Love you guys there too. And I'm self-promoting a lot. And it's, it's, it's weirding me out. But, sets. Then you do the 50. Now, we saw this past week, the 50 week two. So we saw the, the cards from week one going to week two. Obviously, Taylor Mays is great, phenomenal, best user in the game. Now, it is best because these things actually shot out to about 30K. So the gap back method worked even well, even better. These things shot out to about 30K when uh the new cards came out so it's not a terrible idea to have these things done and ready waiting to go because even at 30k there was some profit in the sets because how insane absolutely bonkers insane the power up prices are for a lot of these cards so it's a good idea to have these cards you know potentially invest in them for the next 50 drop and hope we get a big other name like taylor mays and shads again uh big names in the game and that's not a bad idea. Definitely prepping that during the week when the demand for those cards are low and uh, you know people are kind of like just lazy selling off their pack pulls, getting it back. Because if you look at like Maze right now, take a look at his card prices. And I haven't looked at it, so I, I'm kind of going to this blind. Hopefully, all right, so 81. Let's look at his uh, power up card price. 306 for his power up and his top card, his 91 is so 306 91 is 342 so 640 thousand coins for those two cards to do the set now you're like wait a second that's kind of good isn't it 642 and these things are 20k a pop let me break out oh wait, wait i should do this on the training spreadsheet all right so it takes 32 of them right equals 32 times let's say you get each of them for 20k 640 to do it and you get 640 back nah, that's about right right now when the cards come out maybe these things go up maybe i don't know might not be a bad investment as those things were going for 30k on friday i don't know I'm definitely going to look to get a few of these uh, 50 cards, at least enough to do three sets ready, maybe four sets so I can sell right away because prices got bonkers. Yeah, definitely, definitely worth it. I mean, I know there's not a lot of maze, but there's other 80 to 81 50 cards up there. So there you go. Not a bad tip. Maybe grab a few of these before uh, they go up again Friday, if they go up again. But if you get some boring cards, they won't go up. Nobody cares about boring cards if they're like some freaking lineman again like legends were so most feared coming the 16th i think next week i'll probably do some more stuff on that for market monday maybe i'll talk about another videos this week invest sell team i've been getting a couple questions on that and i don't know right because they've been kind of okay on a lot of rerolls this year i will not be selling off i'll probably be selling off a lot of my binder stuff maybe some cards i don't need like backup tight ends or something or like fourth or fifth wide receiver. I got some wide receivers in my binder. Maybe I'll get out from under my Barry Sanders card, although that's really nice for the theme team chemistries. That one's going to be hard to get rid of, really hard. Um, but so it's, I wouldn't sell off because I'm, I'm into a lot of power-ups and most fear generally isn't a, a, a blow or back out type of promo with high-end cards. There'll be like, what, four or five top-end cards in the promo. So your entire team won't be needed. But like, if they do a re-roll, the market might even go up. So it's not something I'm going to do sell off outside of some spare pieces so I can have some coins ready. Uh, but let me know what you guys are doing for most fear. I would definitely stack coins. We'll probably get like a top end card. Hopefully 
Megatron, Moss, like we got a few years ago, right? That one was insane. Um, so that's what it is. That's, you know, that's life. What was that? Was, oh, all pro packs, those things feel like they got nerfed, right? They were actually giving out realistic cards, and I hate it. I pulled out 10 today on stream with coins, um, and like I got 187, which which is annoying because it's 187. It's like one out of nine packs, pulled 10 packs, and I got one. So it's like realistic odds. Before, it didn't feel realistic, right? This shit was spitting out like 90, 91s like they were nothing. So, dang, it sucks, but it definitely feels like they got nerfed. But, like, they're actually, you know, the odds they print now. But I don't know. It felt wild before. Let me know what you guys think. Maybe you guys didn't have as good luck as I or, or some other people did on them previously because they were crazy. Anyway, yeah, today the market also went down due to these all pro packs. So I invested in some 84s, 85s, 86s today because I feel like if on a wild card Wednesday, if it's some like other cool promo, if it's like power up expansion, I don't think we'll see a huge market rise, if any at all. But if they bring back in like more heavyweights, maybe 90 overall, what can we get? Campus heroes would be kind of cool. Um, or some other sort of promo new stuff like that coming back. O award series like back in the day. And I know MLB has it too. We can see some market go up Wednesday. So I'll look to sell off again Wednesday. Um, Tuesday last week was a sell day. So it might not be a bad idea to sell tomorrow after Team of the Week or even before. And it's, it's your, your choice, right? Because Team of the Week re or sorry, Weekend League Rewards come out Tuesday. Monthly Week and League, Week and League Rewards are Thursday. So market could go up if people take a lot of coins, and that's maybe why we see it Tuesday night being a good sell time too. Team Affinities, hopefully they come out this Friday. They've been um, teased a little bit. Team Affinities with, uh, you know, they said Team of the Week cards could go into them. So I would definitely try and have a few Team of the Week cards stacked in your binder because they hinted at those being into the sets, but it's going to take a while for us to build up Team of the Week cards. So definitely look for Team Affinities. It's not going to be Team Builders or uh, Team Diamonds, but... Uh, what, what was it like superstars or team uh, standouts right standouts so players that have been good good years so far for the teams hopefully not hopefully this friday but we'll see anyways that's the video i hope you guys enjoyed thanks for watching the uh market monday um once again to remind you sean alexander and uh, ocu and you are on their way tomorrow for team of the week i'll be streaming for that too when that goes live but we'll talk about the rest of them tomorrow morning until we meet again